Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Indigo Communications. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Tam McManus and Alison McConnell are here with me on this Monday. Uh, lots to discuss from the weekend's football, lots to look ahead to this week in Scottish football and in European competition. All you have to do, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications and you can join our ever-growing football family. And thank you to you all uh, for joining us in great numbers. We're absolutely delighted with the podcast downloads, YouTube and the app downloads as well. Thank you very much to each and every one of you. Um, okay, uh, lots of people like to join us and uh, post their own messages on what they'd like to say about the weekend results, so we'll be happy to read out uh, more than a few for you as well. We start, obviously, uh, with some sad news. Obviously, at Friday night, just after the programme had finished, the news came out from Rangers that Andy Gorham was receiving treatment for cancer, and we wish him uh, the very best from everyone here on the football show. Uh, the goalie was indeed a wonderful keeper. Uh, Ruffy, you played with him uh, at Hibs and at international level. Yeah, I had a fantastic record. They took over for me, he took my goalkeeping spot at Hibs and then he took, <coughs> took over for me at Scotland. So, you know, no, we're good mates and uh, we've known each other for a long time and it's terrible to hear something like that. I'm actually going to go and see him tomorrow with a friend of ours, Sati, and we'll see how he is. Yeah, absolutely. Best wishes from everyone on the football show. Um, obviously, there's lots of messages coming in, some of them obviously tongue-in-cheek. Um, I think Charlie's in for a rough 10 minutes on this programme, I have to be honest with you, after his dive. Um, but lots of messages from uh, lots of people over the weekend. I thought I'd throw a few in. Um, Brian, who's an exiled Dundee United fan in Malaysia, said... Um, after uh, practising his skills in the box at Tannadice two weeks ago, Charlie has now moved on to exquisite performances at Dens on Saturday that will give him a walk up to the start of the next Commonwealth Games representing the Scottish diving team. Please discuss this. Um, Eddie Montgomery says, somebody give Charlie a snorkel because that was one hell of a dive at the weekend. And Harry Fitzpatrick, who's not happy with me, looking forward to your show, Peter, to see your opinion of your hero, Charlie. <laughs> What an embarrassment. Blatant cheating. Should be ashamed of himself. Uh, I mean, there's nothing worse than liking somebody on this programme who doesn't maybe play for the team that you like anyway. You do um, like him well, I mean, Ruffy, but uh, it's very evident. Yeah, yeah. Well, Ruffy, I said that to you last point. Point. I like Ali more than you two. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, let's cut to the chase. I have to apologise to so many uh, people who watch the show and demand sporting integrity and demand a certain moral obligation, whether talking about football or indeed playing it. And I, and I must apologise, it was a dreadful dive. I mean, it was absolutely outrageous. I started laughing when I was watching it. Yeah, I think it was funny. And, and once Charlie did it, I think he realised as well uh, it was going to get picked up. But uh, desperate desperate times, desperate measures, you know, try to get a free kick outside the box, probably thought he could maybe have scored for it if he'd got it. But I, I never wrote, did he get a yellow card? Did he get a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I thought he was good. When he walked away and he had that wee smile, yeah. I thought that just summed it up for me. I think a lot of people were more worried had he fallen on one of the United players, it could have been <laughs> catastrophic. But nevertheless, uh, we, are, we, we, see the <laughs> we see the funny side yet, but you want him hammered. I think it was disgraceful. I think that the club should find him heavily. <laughs> I think it's honestly it's an absolute disgraceful act of cheating from Charlie and yeah. the club should find him heavily. Four weeks' wages. Yeah. <laughs> Given to charity. Oh. And what does charity, want? <coughs> charity want with half a million? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disgrace. Disgrace for Charlie. And he got it tight off him on Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, even even in slow motion. Yeah. Even up, so even up to normal works. speed is embarrassing, isn't it? No, it's, it's, it's a shocker. Yeah, what about yourself as a journalist, Ali? I mean, you've got to you've got to look at that and be scathing. You've been scathing on this show. I don't want your whole back. What did you make of it? It was shocking. Absolutely <laughs> shocking. <coughs> it's yeah. the most blatant dive I think we've seen all season, and it's so clumsy. <laughs> it's like there's there's no art to it. There's he was not anticipating even, uh, contact, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, clearly really from. <laughs> you think, uh, think of the dark arts. You're thinking that was fairly in the light. Yeah. <laughs> should like, you have been fined, Alan? Do you think you should get fined? I think yeah. we can stop at that. I think yeah, we can see that. Has it altered your friendship with him? <laughs> A yellow card suffices. <laughs> A yellow card, <laughs> brilliant. Anyway, um, Charlie, I know watches the show on a regular basis. You're an absolute disgrace. I mean, honestly. Um, but we've got to keep him on the program. Roughly. Yeah, I thought he was going to do it in the last minute. Yeah. Three kick outside the box. I went, oh, here we go, here it is. Unfortunately, took the boys' head off. 
and yeah. then the final <laughs> whistle went. <laughs> if he's getting fined at anything at all, he should get into the PLZ kitty. Yeah, absolutely. Um, lots of feel free will. Charlie. Um, Peter could find him. <laughs> exactly. If he turned up, I could find him. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, quite a lot of people are mentioning Charlie. So we've given it tight to him. I, I, there's nothing more you can say. It was a blatant dive. It's outrageous. You can't defend the indefensible, although some people do in this country. But nevertheless, let's crack on and not get into the political part of it. Dundee won, St Johnson won. Is the game up? Yeah, I think the I guess Aberdeen, isn't it, next week for them? Up at Aberdeen. Yeah, I think that's the one, you know. But uh, St Johnson will get a lift for that draw. And uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But if you're asking me, I would say yeah. Yeah, Mark McGee says no, we're not out of it. One thing I'm saying is, and I, I'm not being fancy for it, but we're not conceding, you know. We still, we, we can win a game, you know, and if we win one game next week, then who knows, we can maybe win another. So we're, we're not conceding. We'll keep going until it's mathematically impossible for us to get the points we need. Uh, we're not out of it, says uh, Mark McGee. Um, uh, the bonus is that uh, he'll have to keep his clothes on. Um, Callum Davison said it was great credit to his players because they could have collapsed, but they kept on battling. Football was excellent and deservedly got back into the game. And then after that, it was a little bit like, you know, do you want the point or do you want the three points? I think it was a really hard one. I, thought you, I think you could sense a little bit of hesitation from, from my players there. Uh, but they were delighted with the... The courage and the character they showed going one nil down quite easily could have collapsed and you know we weren't finding our way through them. We once to sat in uh, we managed to accept half and not credit for guns. Yeah, fair play to St Johnson. They made a battle of it, got the equaliser alley in the end. The point suits them, they've still got that five point advantage. Yeah, I think Dundee really needed to win that game. I think uh, I think it gets to a point where you just run out of road. I think um I think St Johnson will fancy their chances now. I think they'll be emboldened by the draw that they take. Uh, and I think Dundee are, are very much in the mire, although what you would say is Aberdeen could fairly get dragged into that as well now. I don't think they're safe just yet. Yeah, it's a good point you make and, and probably in the next five minutes we'll be speaking to uh, our councillor up there in Aberdeen. Um, we always like to try and get a broad spectrum of people, people who understand winning and also um, you know, journalists who understand losing on a regular basis uh, and there's none better than Andrew Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not a good season for him, is it? No, honestly, at the start of the season I met Andrew in a car park, ironically, at Perth. Uh, you know, Jet Black John, Hair. Johnson's home. Going, <laughs> black hair. He was he was going out to nightclubs. He was having a great time, and then would you believe it? I mean, it's just gone pear shaped for him. I I just I I, I can't believe the run um, that he's witnessed with one manager, and then the other. We'll speak to Andrew very very shortly indeed, and you'll be able to tell by his attire that I think he's given up on football completely. <laughs> so so see if you can guess while you're on the live feed here. See if you can guess before we put his picture up later on. Can you guess Andrew? Andrew's rugby shirt <laughs> it's an international rugby team uh, see if you can guess which one it is and do you think we should send somebody a prize if they guess yeah why not yeah. here Ruffy will we send somebody send a prize an Aberdeen, got it an Aberdeen strip yeah. well yeah. to be, to be <laughs> send them an Aberdeen strip no, I an Aberdeen player I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to put them on a downer but a hey, fair play to Andrew at least he steps up to the plate and shows up good times and bad times um, but uh, nevertheless if you can guess which international rugby shirt he's wearing uh, we're going to send something out to you it's as simple as that um, so Andrew Shiny on the edge there we can get to see that um, what about first of all uh, yesterday uh, well, we'll talk about Rangers first because uh, they really stepped up to the plate against mm. 10 men, Ruffy, uh, and, and got the win. Yeah, it just shows you the, the, the squad that they've got. I think he made five or six changes. And again, the guys that all come on did their bit. I think everybody thought when they went down to 10 men, they went, oh, there's a wee chance here. Then it was one each. But after that, they just controlled the game completely. I thought Motherwell were really poor. Yeah, um, Giovanni Van Ronkers had this to say after his 10 men uh, won this match. And uh, I'll tell you in a minute what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst had to say. I'm very proud we started the game uh, well, but the red card changed the momentum for us. After that, we had to adjust our game plan, but I think it worked out well, especially because we have a lot of speed up front. Defensively, we didn't give anything away, especially in the second half. So I'm really proud of the players because we had to dig deep and change our style a little bit. But in the end... We were very happy with the wind. No argument there. Um, any argument with the red card, Ali? 
Um, yeah, I think it, yeah, I, I think you could make a case for it maybe being a booking rather than a red. I think you'll, you'll maybe feel a bit aggrieved by it. Uh, but I thought the performance as a whole was very dominant from Rangers. I thought they, they dismissed Motherwell really at half time when you're looking at it poised at 1 1 and, and down to 10 men. You're, you're wondering whether or not it's going to be a sticky afternoon. But I thought they came out and just controlled the game and could have been a wider margin of the victory. Yeah, amazing. Um, Graham Alexander wasn't happy. He thought his side should have been able to do exactly what Ali was saying. It's a, it's, it's a real disappointment for us because um, if we'd have pressed, and put pressure on them as well as we did in the first half. And I, uh, I think we, there was a possibility we could have won the game without a doubt. Um, but we didn't do that. And until we learn valuable lessons about how our team um, does its best work, and it has to be constant and and for 95 minutes, and it has to be every week, then we'll our form will be up, down, and indifferent. Well, if they were poor. Don't take anything away from Rangers because I thought Scott Wright's goal was a peach. Did you think it was a penalty? I, I, I actually did think it was a penalty. I just think he's clumsy. He gets caught wrong side and if any sort of clip there, you know, it's a penalty kick. I disagree with you. I thought it was a red card for Balogun as well. I thought that was a definite red and I thought it was a penalty. But I thought Motherwell were absolutely dreadful in the second half. I mean, one each, as Ali said there, is Motherwell, you think they'll at least get a point out of the game and Rangers cantered the second half. I know Rangers played well, but... When you're playing against 10 men at home, you know, you've got to have a go. And Motherwell just never had any go whatsoever. They were really, really poor and I think it's a wee bit of a sad indictment that they're in the top six, to be honest. You know, yeah. the run they've been on this year, they're still in the top six, which doesn't augur well for the rest of the teams in the bottom six, to be honest. Well, we had a chat with Tam Cowan. Motherwell fans are not that enamoured no. with Graham Alexander. I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out in the remaining games, um, how Motherwell fans uh, look at this one. Uh, apart from that, I've got to ask you, Ruffy, uh, about the, the decisions. We're all agreed to disagree today. I thought it was never a penalty and I thought it was a red card. Uh, well, again, we get the chance to see it again. And then and I saw it twice. I thought it was a, I thought it was a red card. It, it wasn't a, the big lunge that usually gets you a red card, but it, it was pretty forceful and I think there was contact. Again, I don't think he meant it to, to be contact, but the, I thought the, the one with Motherwell was not the same, but similar. You know, I thought the boy and the Motherwell player could have got a red card as well, but uh, no, that's the way it is just now. The referees have to make that decision. Just as a little footnote, Ali, and I think this is something that's possibly creeping into the game on a regular basis now, which is indicative of the way our game is at the moment and why we can't attract big sponsors and why we can't attract a lot of money into the game on a regular basis. Um, I found it astounding that they interviewed one manager with the sponsorship in the background and then clearly somebody had gone about with white tape to cover the sponsor up when the Rangers manager was there. Um, it tells me, I'll, I'll, I'll fire the first salvo on this, it tells me that the SPFL are spineless when it comes to standing up to a deal that's in place um, that all clubs can't adhere to. I, I just thought, it, I, I was gobsmacked to see it. I was, I was surprised it was allowed for the very reasons that you've just given. I think um, at a time when you're struggling to attract any sponsorship deal and when the, the majority of clubs voted to accept the money, then I think you, you have a duty then to promote the sponsor's brand if, you, if you're taking the money that it brings in. I also thought there was an element of hypocrisy to it as well. I think um, the game was rearranged rightly, as we spoke about last week, in order to maximise Rangers' chances as they go on to, to present Scotland in the semi-final of a European competition. So I think sometimes there has to be a bit of, a bit of give and take. No, I, I totally agree with everything Ali said there. It's just petty and... It's, just, it's not a good look for, for, for people down south or, you know, Europe. We've seen that, you know, tape, white tape, taping up a sponsor behind a It's very amateurish. Board. It's, it is, this is the word I was looking for. It's just it's total amateur. See, if I was the marketing manager at the SPFL, I, I would just go into a darkened room and start thudding my head off at <laughs> Robbie because it's very difficult. I mean, it's listen, everybody survives on sponsorship and people backing you and things like that, but we tread a fine line because we obviously have to offer opinion. But this is a group of people who have to try and attract major sponsors because it's big money to sponsor it. You're getting TV exposure like nothing on earth. Um, you know, whether it's the BBC, whether it's news worthy from all the channels who show 
the interviews after the games, including ourselves, uh, and uh, and then you've got Sky Network, sometimes BT, sometimes Premier Sports. It's it, we are struggling mm -hmm. to get big money in, and big money that could actually help all the clubs. There might never be an argument about. VAR and who's paying for it if we could actually go out and get big companies to say come and join Scottish football which man for man per head of population we are fanatical about it yeah and, and it's it's not just the the top clubs that need money every, every club needs money everybody needs sponsorship every, it gets shared out with every club and uh, it shouldn't just be all about one club obviously we weren't privy to the negotiations how it all came about you know I think Rangers said they, they weren't privy to you know, the end deal and they stuck their heels in and, and, and that's where we are but it's a lesson for everybody that when new sponsorship comes in we have to get it right yeah, absolutely. Um, and Rory Morrison says, marketing manager of the SPFL, he's laughing at this, if they have one, uh, which I'm sure they don't, they should be sacked for not doing anything. Uh, very difficult to actually try and be a marketing manager when everybody is backstabbing each other. Um, Rory, you should try it. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, good news, um, which was Rangers Player of the Year awards last night. Alfredo Morelos was named the, the Rangers Player of the Year. Um, any argument with that one? Uh, I think Tavernier would probably be the only other one uh, that we could maybe be up there with him. Yeah, but I think Morelos is Player well. of the Year. Yeah, I think about the two of them. I think that's yeah. they've been the two standout, consistent performers. I think for Rangers. And no the, argument about the young player, Ruffy uh, Calvin Bassey, young player of the year for Rangers. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't agree. I, I would have thrown Golson's name into the, the first one as well. I think he's had a good year. But no, Bassey's been very, very good. Yeah. Are you speaking last night of the Rangers do? No, no, no. no. Um, Peter just got it before me. Yeah, Nick didn't there. <laughs> 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 you know, I think there's the same. I think there's if you watch if you watch, if you watch Wayne's World, there's a moment when the two of them walk into a club. It's not the club they should be in, and, they, <laughs> and the entire club goes. <laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, um, anyway, <laughs> for me, Bassey has really stepped up because of the nature of injuries and then suddenly he's in and people start to realise what he really can offer. Yeah, I thought he had a, a very good game at Hamden last Sunday. I thought he really uh, shackled Tom Rodgick, he really prevented him playing, I thought uh, that helped to set the tone for a Rangers victory, but overall, yeah, I think he's a very, had a very strong second half of the campaign. Yep, okay, um, so Rangers uh, get that win, and that reduced the gap to three points, and then, suddenly, Celtic have it all to do up at Dingwall, but they responded big time, they got an early goal to settle the nerves, Tam, uh, through Kyogo, and then it got a little bit harem scare him for a wee ten minute period in the second half. Yeah, they did. I think once they got that initial first goal early doors, you know, first 10 minutes, you think Celtic going to win the game comfortably, you know, 3 or 4 nothing. But as long as it's 1-0, you know, Ross County are always in the game and they had a couple of half chances in the second half. Obviously, the, the goal at the end kills it. But Celtic, you know, were, were pretty wasteful in front of goal. They could have scored 3 or 4 easily. You know, no Kyogo got his goal, but he missed a couple of chances. So, listen, the only thing that matters now is the result. And Celtic went up there, got the result. I think that all but kind of kills off the league. Yeah, and no surprise, Ange Postecoglou was fulsome in his praise of his players' performance. We've been walking this tightrope for a very, very long time, and, and while others haven't noticed, um, I think the reason they haven't noticed is because the players have dealt with it really well. Um, you know, you, you look at our record and you look at the, the challenges we've had through that time, you know, the players have been laser focused on what's important and what's important is, you know, we, we, we come up to every game, respect our opponent and try and play our football and, and impose ourselves on it. And Yeah, uh, and that's exactly what they were able to do, impose themselves. And, and I mean, I was a little bit disappointed in what Ross County had to offer Ali. I didn't really think they laid a glove on Celtic. We expect so much of them these days. But in the end, when Jota eventually got the second goal, that was it, game over. Yeah, I think just uh, I think some of that comes down to how Celtic played, particularly in the first half. I, I'd agree with Tam. I think uh, if Kyogo Furuhashi is fully fit, I think he goes in at the break with a hat trick. I think um, the amount, I think there was more than twenty chances. I think in that first half, I think Celtic just dominated. I think the the bulk of the game was played out in in Ross County's final third. I think Celtic just uh, 
restricted them to, to any damage that they could do. I think the longer the game went on at 1-0, I think you, you risk some kind of anxiety creeping in just because of the, the tenuous nature of a, of a one-goal lead. But I think overall it was actually... I think the performance in some ways felt like a, a retort, maybe, from, from all the chat last week about whether or not Celtic were under pressure going up and, and whether or not they could cope with the scrutiny in the aftermath of losing the, the Cup semi-final last weekend. And I thought the performance really answered those critics. And I think, effectively now, I think it, 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 it takes a title to Celtic Park. Briefly, Jota, do you think he'll stay? No, I, and I've, I've not thought that all season. I think... Um, I think he will assess his options. I think very much it's about seeing what's there at the end of the season. I think I would be surprised if he to say. I think if he was going to say, a deal would have been done in January. I think uh, Celtic would have been happy enough to keep him. I think uh, Benfica and the clubs would have agreed a fee. I think if it was as simple as just uh, putting a contract in front of him, it would have been done by now. I think he'll probably have a look and, and decide his next move in I, the summer. I don't think he's actually come, has he come out and said that I, I want to stay at Celtic long term. Oh no, because he's keeping his think, option. I think exactly. I think, so I think if he did want to, I think stay. there was a very interesting aside yesterday when Ange Postecoglou said it'll happen if both parties want it to happen. Well, I absolutely. think you can infer from that that. Well, there's two edges to that story. I mean, I was standing next to him when he said it, and you you, you look at it, you read between the lines. It's have Celtic got the will to spend six and a half million. That's one part of it, and you know, does he want to stay? There's two. There's two elements to this. I think it's probably Which more the greater, than the player. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think Celtic probably would commit to that kind of fee on the back of the season he's had. That's before we touch on salary levels and everything, yeah. which is obviously a bigger. I think is 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 actually the bigger issue and the bigger stumbling block at times. Um, but I think no, I I think uh, he'll assess his options, and I would be surprised if he committed to Celtic. Okay, will you resign if he does? Mm-hmm. No, no, I can't afford to resign. Another thing I was going to say to you is, don't worry about sporting integrity. There is none. Uh, anyway, <coughs> uh, what about Ross County? Uh, Malky Mackay. I had an interesting chat with Roy McGregor, but first and foremost, uh, Malky Mackay is desperately trying to get Ross County into European football, which would be incredible. Uh, they know what they have to do. Come the split. Um, we were the fifth best team in the country and that's where we're at and that's what I'm talking about that we are now in a mini league with Motherwell and Dundee United who both were beaten over the weekend as well so nothing changes and we'll just you know, we move on to next week against Hearts Yeah, um, they've got those games remaining that they've just got to try and create a wee bit of history it would be incredible for them I spoke to Roy McGregor um, just before the game kicked off and he you know, really likes Malky, really likes what he's doing. Um, his biggest fear, as he was saying to me, is, you know, Peter will get a great manager. My biggest fear now is, that, you know, the vultures are hovering. Somebody might go and nick him. Yeah, I think that's always been the case for Malky. He's he's a top manager, obviously. He's, he's missed the meals off the pitch. He's, meant he's ended up at Ross County, let's be honest. You know, he wouldn't be there if it wasn't for that. You know, he's, he's, he was managing the Premier League with Cardiff, you know, in England. So, he's got a great pedigree as a manager. Um, you know, whether... A Hibs or somebody comes in for him in the summer, who knows? Um, but I think there will there will be people looking at him because he's done a brilliant job there. They were favourites, I think, and get relegated. You know, and if he gets him um, into Europe, he's he's built there for manager of the year as well. Yeah, I think he's quoted, and you know, I think a lot of people are looking and thinking he's well worth a nomination, Ruffy. Yeah, I heard somebody mention it at the weekend, and it's always at this side of the the year. And, Names start getting uh, thrown forward, and yeah. well, that's I'd love to know. No, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, it's the criteria that I can't get my head around. Yeah, you know who, who do you give it? To? You know, because everybody's got a different, a different bonus. Everybody's got a different remit. Every, some yeah. people don't win in. Who are you giving it to? You know, I've, I've not made up my mind yet. The season's not finished. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <You've> <laughs> I been, think that's another thing. It gets awarded too early sometimes. Yeah, we know that. It's very difficult. We know that. No, it is difficult. difficult. But you've got four yeah. days to come up with a name. Yeah. Well, before. give it on Friday then. Okay. Magic. Uh, anyway, <laughs> apart from anything else, uh, for every high of chatting about football, there has to be a low. I give you. Andrew Shiny is joining us now. Um, Andrew, I just don't know what to say to you to try and pick you up on this one because um, I, the, the only way I can sum it up is. First of all, I don't think anybody got the fact that you were wearing an Australian rugby shirt, but I don't think you're going to disagree with me here. Aberdeen are ranked rotten. Yeah, can't disagree with that. Um, 
although um, despite the fact that I don't think they did enough to win the game on Saturday, I didn't think they deserved to lose the game and had Grant Irvin, the referee, done even a suspicion of a good job, it would have been a different outcome. That clash between Max Trayek and Vinny Bazawan, how a referee can see a palm in the face of a player as being a foul against the player and a yellow card to the player just beggars belief. And I mean, you guys, I'm sure, have seen it, uh, but it was just ludicrous and it turned the game because had Max Trayek been sent off, as he should have been, had a penalty been awarded, and bear in mind Aberdeen have missed 7 out of 73 penalties in the last seven years. Yeah, I think it's fair to say you would expect Lewis Ferguson to score. Aberdeen won nil up. All of a sudden it's a different game. Two minutes later, Aberdeen concede, and unfortunately the same old malaise kicks in once again. The confidence drains. Uh, then a second penalty is, or a penalty is awarded uh, to Livingston which, to my mind, was never a penalty. I've watched it time and again, and I can't see where the contact that um, Funso Ojo is supposed to have made with Andrew Shinney comes. However, the penalty is taken and scored, and then Aberdeen get one, um, and it's too late. But um, there's a huge lack of confidence coursing through that Aberdeen side just now. On paper, they look like a side that should be winning games. On the pitch, they look like a group of strangers. Yeah. I can, listen, I, I, Andrew, more often than not, you know, we chat and we get your expertise in these things. I can't argue with you. I mean, Tam, <laughs> Strayek should have walked. It was like it was like a, a warm-up for, you know, Fury against uh, White. I mean, it was just outrageous. He should have been sent off. Yeah, Aberdeen are obviously poor and lose the game, but big decisions like that are, are crucial in the game. He just comes out and, and volleys him, you know, and he just hits him with his arm and red card penalty kick, changes the game totally. You know, you won nothing up against 10 men, you're, you're, you're going to win the game. So, little things like that, I think, go against you when you're at the bottom of the league and you're in a bad run. You know, Livingston, you know, get the wee break there. I thought it was a soft penalty as well for Livingston. Well, that's what Andrew, I mean, Andrew penalty, said this, never a, And it's not, I mean, more often than not, I mean, Andrew's already agreed with me, Aberdeen are ranked rotten. I mean, if you can look at a team and you can say it, it's going your way or not, or they're bad. There's no defending them at times, but th th that was a soft penalty, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think the big decisions went against them on the day. Um, obviously, Andrew watched the game; he didn't see the full ninety minutes to, to, to get a better picture of it. But you know, two big decisions went against them. Didn't think it was a penalty, and they should have had a penalty in the red card. So, I think the, the game against Dundee is now humongous. I, I think Dundee, Andrew will probably know this as well. Dundee, I've got a horrendous record up there. Um, I can remember two thousand five. I think I was at Dundee, and they beat them in about twenty years. So that's you can add that onto that. So. They've got a bad record up there, and I think Aberdeen, if they win that, then they can mm -hmm. they can get the, the summer holidays booked. Yeah, I know, Ruffy, it's in your contract that you don't really like to speak to Andrew. Yeah, but um, you're going to speak to yeah, him. Yeah, I, I was going to say to Andrew, uh, somebody was telling me, Andrew, if you could verify that Jim Goodwin actually did a lap round the park before the game applauding the fans, and a lap round the park after the game applauding the fans. He does do that, Alan. He does. Um, he's done it ever since he came in the door. Um, the, the first game down at Motherwell, he made a point of going and applauding the fans before the game. He does it before all the games at Pataudry and he does it after the games and he said it's just something that he does. Uh, and win, lose or draw, whether he's getting pelters hurled at him from the stands, that's something that he, he just does. To, it's to, as much to say thank you for coming along and supporting us or... Um, you know, sorry for letting you down, but I hope you'll come along next week and you can see that, you know, there's a bigger picture here that next season he's promised that things are going to be better. Um, so he's put his neck in the chopping block. He, he doesn't hide. There's there's no no question of that with Jim Goodwin. Um, he, he doesn't, you know, hide behind, uh, oh, we're sorry about this, sorry about that, sorry about the next. Um, but... I think there are a few questions being asked now. There were uh, a few murmurs about the team selection on Saturday. You know, Christian Ramirez not starting the game. Um, 
Calvin Ramsey, who's being touted as being a multi-million pound player um, to here, there and everywhere, um, he doesn't get a start. Now, what sort of message does that send out? As Peter said, Aberdeen have been ranked rotten the majority of this season. Here's a kid that Aberdeen hoped to sell for millions, but he can't get into the team when they're ranked rotten. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Ruffy. I mean, <laughs> Ramirez dropping him, he's the man, mm-hmm. only guy that looks like scoring. Ramsey is the man that they're hoping to sell for a tidy sum, and that tidy sum might actually bankroll the manager's plans for next season. Yeah, I was surprised when uh, Ramirez wasn't in the, the team when you're looking for somebody who's going to come up with a goal. Well, this season it's been him more than anybody else, so I don't know if it's, it's Jim Goodwin's idea or, you know, maybe getting him to play a wee bit better or maybe trying out new things, but certainly I, I was really surprised. Um, I, I just wonder, uh, five points of difference, do you think Aberdeen could get dragged into a playoff place as the games are running out? I mean, I do, I, I definitely do think they could. I think if you look at results over recent weeks, I wouldn't rule it out at all. I think they could find themselves being dragged into it. Interesting times. Uh, it's going to be blood, guts and thunder uh, at the weekend against Dundee. By hook or by crook, Andrew, you need to find something. Absolutely. Um, this is one of the biggest games that they've had in the last couple of decades. Um, they've got to win the game. Uh, and then they've got to look at, uh, you know, St Johnston against St Mirren. And I suppose ideally a draw in that game because that keeps St Johnston back. But say St Johnston were to win, OK, if Aberdeen win, then St Mirren drop behind them. And as you've mentioned earlier, the goal difference is, is worth an extra point. But if Aberdeen lose and uh, and St Johnston win, yes, St Mirren are in there, but St Johnston are right in there as well. And... At the moment, one win in 14, you can't see where a win's coming from. And the lack of confidence that I've mentioned running through the team has got to be changed somehow or other. I don't know whether you need a change of personnel, uh, a change of uh, style in in terms of playing. Um, You could argue they need a change of luck. Um, But as Lewis Ferguson said after the game, he said, you make your own luck. And at the moment, Aberdeen aren't doing anything. Um, They were better against Livingston than they were against Ross County. But time and again, they weren't able to get across onto a red shirt. Or when they had shots at goal, they weren't on target. So there's things that need to be worked at, but time is running out. Yep, absolutely. Um, I was just about to say, I was trying to look at uh, that little quote about, you know, Keep me. You make a mistake once. Keep making the same mistake. You know continually. Uh, Andrew's talking there about should it be, you know, a change of personnel. Of course it is because it's the same players that are giving you the same results. It's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work it out. You, it needs a clear out. Yeah, I think it will come. I think it's already started. To be honest, I think um, you know when he, the minute he came out and the club uh, cancelled J Emmanuel Emmanuel Thomas's contract and. I think the, the clear out will have begun. I think uh, Jim Goodwin will be desperate to get to the summer and, and try and fund a rebuild almost. I think Calvin Ramsey might be the, the best way to do that. I think if the club bring in any kind of decent fee for a very good young player, that uh, that, that the money that it raised would uh, would maybe help him just source a couple of players that could come in and, and make a difference. But they've looked like a team without direction, a team in free fall for the duration of the campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was Albert Einstein. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. I knew there was somewhere in there. There's a few others uh, that go with uh, doing it all the time. The same thing uh, with expecting different results from the same players in this case. Uh, and Andrew Shiny has uh, summed it up brilliantly. Uh, Aberdeen in trouble. Need a win. Big one at the weekend against Dundee. Uh, and, of course, they obviously have to... Uh, try and accommodate and get used to the fact that they'll be coming up against Greg Loganis. Uh, yep. You know, the big diver, once he gets to 25 yards out, Aberdeen could be in trouble when, when Adam's about. Well, Charlie may get excited for that dive and get banged for the next, last four games. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, want to, you want to start a kick-off at the PFA Player, the player of the Year awards? Oh, poor Charlie. Anyway, apart from anything else, big one for Aberdeen. Thanks to Andrew Shiny. Absolutely top drawer. I was getting in the neck the other day there. Was it you that mentioned? Was it one of you guys that mentioned about um, 
Barry Mackay when we were talking about him being in the running Roughly, for yeah. Player of the Year. Did you mention it? And I said, what, Barry Mackay? Yeah. You know, four or five. Mm -hmm. God, Hearts fans are absolutely battering me for this. I mean, That's a long-standing thing with you. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I mean, honestly, he's not player. He's not... He's like, I, I'm pro Barry Mackay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been absolutely singing his praises. He's, been, he's not nomination for Player of the Year. No chance. Mm. Too well, many what players. was your four again? Did we all give her four? Yeah, we, we? we gave her four. We were looking, I mean, you mentioned Cameron Carter Vickers, but Craig Gordon, for me, is player of the year. Mm -hmm. um, Craig Gordon's my player of the year. Yeah, and then you... Is that why you get him around top one? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, with the away shirt underneath it. Um, <laughs> Craig Gordon, uh, what's the other one? Who was the other one? Callum McGregor. Charles, Tavin, Tavin, yeah. Charles Regan Cook. No, I'm taking him out now. How? Because he's not done anything in the last... What, game five or six months? <laughs> no, five or six months. Five or six games. Uh, no, I think you've been unkind to him. By the way, <laughs> so do I. Uh, um, Callum McGregor. Yeah, I think Craig so. Gordon. I Is think it? Craig Gordon's a very worthy one, and I think when you, if you judge it on players who are the difference between their their team taking all three points or, or not dropping points, and, and I think Craig Gordon's probably been worth. At least 12 to 15 points for Hearts this season. Yeah, 3 2 is a good result up at Tanadice, Tom. Yeah, it was a good result. Seen the, seen the highlights last night. Um, first and foremost, what a goal from Dylan Levitt, oh, the young lad on loan. Uh, fantastic. Goal, One of the best it? goals I've seen this season. Little nutmeg, quick feet, and then just slotted it. Brilliant goal. Um, even the second goal was a good goal from Edwards as well. But Hearts, Hearts are a good side this season. They're strong. You know, Sims was on the bench. You, know, you bring a guy like that on. In the last 20 Carrying minutes. A knock. I think yeah. he just wasn't quite fully the teams are tired yeah. and you're bringing a guy like that on 20 minutes. Always li liable to get you the winner. It's a lovely ball from Barry Mackay. Well timed run. Mm -hmm. And a great finish. It was a great assist from Barry Mackay. Uh, outside of the foot, wasn't it? Perfectly weighted. Right around the weighted so Many passes players can do that as well, Duffy. Yeah. Just saying. No, absolutely. I don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a good, he's a good player. I'm, I'm, I, I like him. I like what he's doing. I think he's had a great season. But he's not in the nominations. It's as simple as that. I don't think. I, I think if there was one criticism too, you'd expect to expect him to score a few more goals. Yeah. I think you'd want to want to see him just contributing in, in that sense. But I, I think he's been a an exceptional signing for Hearts. I think he's been one of their their arguably one of their better players. Again, I think Craig Gordon takes the player of the year. But I think Barry Mackay can be pleased with the contribution that he's made, and I think Hearts will be delighted at the way he's performed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Hibbies, in the end, Ewan Henderson gets the all-important goal, um, and it's amazing. Bounce back, looking for a manager. I've heard Roy Keane's name, which I nearly fell off the chair laughing. <laughs> um, I'm dying to know the calibre of manager who's going to accept the parameters that you have to work under at Hibs. I'm sure there'll be some. I'm sure there'll be the people that would be desperate for the Hibs job. It's a big job in Scottish football, but they'll be wanting, if you're, in, if you're a very experienced manager like a Roy Keane or something, you're wanting total you know, calls on the ins and outs. Yeah. You know, People come in, your signings, you know, recruitment. You know, you've got to control all of that. You can't have people dictating to you who you can bring in and who you can't bring in. So that's going to be an issue. But going back to the game on Saturday, the first half is probably one of the worst games I've ever seen all season. Uh, it was terrible. I think it was one attempt at, on target. Which was a trundler into the goalkeeper, uh, and I was nearly falling asleep. Second half, Hibs were better. Got the goal, great finish with Ewan Henderson. No scored enough goals. His first goal for Hibs. He's not scored enough goals for Hibs. He can he can definitely score goals. St. Man hit the bar, you know, huffed and puffed. Good result for Hibs. Takes all, you know, talk of relegation, you know, away, away. from from the club, and yeah. that was the main thing, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a look at the Premiership table uh, to get a, a little flavour of how it all looks then, Ruffy. Um, so, the games are running out. The next one up is Celtic against Rangers on the 1st of May. Uh, that's the Sunday and it's going to be a humdinger of a game. And then at the bottom end, Ruffy, five points. It's a big call. It's going to, it's going to take the escape of all escapes from Dundee, yeah. isn't it? Well, I don't. I don't. I think we all agree that it's not going to be an escape. But I, I definitely think there's a playoff place, and Aberdeen and St Mirren are, are on that free fall. Uh, I would. I would probably go for St Mirren more than Aberdeen uh, to drop into that playoff place. So the, the next game for them is really, really vital. I mean, in fact, they're on vital. But the Johnson as they go on next well, game. Well, wow! If, if St Johnson win that, that's. Oh. 
Yeah, I, I mean, the weekend's games are uh, amazing. Aberdeen against Dundee, Dundee United, Motherwell Hearts against Ross County, Livingston Hibs, St Johnson, St Mirren, and then Celtic Rangers on the Sunday. Uh, what about the predictor, uh, the head-to-head? Four games to go, four games for somebody to hit a 21-pointer. Um, is it going to be that, or will Alisson reign supreme at the top? 291 plays 289 plays 281 and then 286 is 267 is Utam, 262 is Hugh, and then 255 is Tam Cowan. Ruffy, you're just uh, at this moment two points behind Allison, and I'm just 10 points behind her. So it's all to yeah. play for, isn't it? It is all to play for, and you know it gets crucial when you get uh, contestants phoning the adjudicator, you know, and complaining <laughs> about points at this time of the year. Yeah. So Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl's got a, a really, really hard job if you know at the end of the season because everybody will be in tender hooks hoping yeah. they get the right points. Well, to be fair, uh, I mean, this is this is the thing about it because there's a lot of points to play for, Alison. This can take a dramatic twist right at the last minute. I mean, I'm looking at it right now and I get a, I get a feeling, Ruffy, that the helicopter could change direction. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> There is a big point. Somebody's going to get a big yes, score. All you need to know is you're not going to finish last. Oh, you're you mathematically <laughs> clear. Yes, I am not yet, but I've still got two beneath me, so I'm feeling relatively comfortable. Eating pressure for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's the, I mean, the great thing for you is you were really worried at the start of the season. You thought, how am I going to explain to the kids that I've got no to take Christmas them all presents. out of bevy? You know, it would have been a nightmare for you, wouldn't it? But no Christmas presents this year. More good in front of you. Yeah, you must be delighted. <laughs> Yeah. Thrilled. You no, care. I don't think you really care if you win or not, whereas Ruffy and I are absolutely... No, I'm quite glad. I'm relieved just to, um, to be avoiding bottom spot and exactly. uh, shouldering the bill for yeah. taking everyone yeah. out because uh, I've seen the bar bill before. Well, I'll tell you so, one thing, uh, it's going to be a humdinger of a night out. By a few yeah. bellinis in there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. absolutely. We're looking <laughs> forward to Ruffy. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're looking forward to it, Tom. This Sunday we've got Player of the Year yep. uh, coming up, which is a uh, really... It's a good night. A lot of players uh, will turn up for the first time in, you know, what we haven't had it the last two years. Mm. So to go there and, and to host the PFA Player of the Year was an honour, which I don't take lightly. I think somebody reminded me today at a meeting that it's 14 years of hosting it. Which wow. Is, wow. Nobody's undercut you yet. Which is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, by the way, I have to tell you, a few have tried. Um, but it's, it's such a good what's, night. The players what's, love what's, it. What's 14 five grands? <laughs> <laughs> I have some. Um, but uh, it's such a good night. It's a good night out. And the players the players love a bit of dressing room humour as well as being honoured. Yeah. That's a free for all. <laughs> the, later on the night when the players you, you just the hope that the unfortunately it's the players for the lower divisions who don't get a chance to go yeah. to these dues and they, they tend to go out for twelve o'clock in the afternoon yeah. and end up you know, and there is always one team are just not mischievous, just just loud. Yeah, absolutely well. I'm predicting that's going to be Cove Rangers <laughs> this year. Um, because they're coming. Um I wonder <laughs> you know what it's like once people see bright lights and uh, you know, free drink, it's, it's always a recipe for disaster. Although I'm hoping it's a recipe for disaster the week after when we're all invited as yeah. Alison's guest. It'll probably be our Rangers. table. Eh? It'll be our table, it'll oh. be outrageous that <laughs> night. <laughs> we'll be I'll throwing be, things at people. Say something <laughs> as a, the, uh, the role will be <laughs> the top. Um, Hopefully you catch them, Ruffy. Uh, I'm just saying <coughs> that you don't show the same commitment that... Uh, uh, that Hugh Keevan shows to it, which is there's one pint and six straws, and then we all have to sit and drink <laughs> one pint while he leaves. I'm so delighted we're going to your table, Ali. I hope you really step up to the plate. Bring the card with you, can you? <laughs> <laughs> one bottle of each. Don't, don't. This is my insurance for next year's predictor. Don't let us down. Where, is it? Where are we meeting at 12? <laughs> exactly. Um, what about uh, the English Premier League results? Here's how it all. Uh, panned out down south in England, which was a really interesting uh, weekend because it, Liverpool and Man City are head to head. I guess Tam said neither of the two of them will lose to the end of the season. Mm-hmm. Tam, um, but the, the I don't see it, either team dropping points. I think Liverpool's got a slightly harder running, but Man City have got an easy running. I don't see them dropping points, and sadly for Liverpool, they're going to miss out by a point. Yeah, I, I my biggest. Pain for this one. I re- although I, you know, um, love Liverpool, Ruffy. Um, I really don't want to see Everton go out of the the league. I just think no. it's 
uh, I'm saying it's a travesty. It's not that you know if you're if you don't perform well, you're out. But I, I really would like to see them by the skin of their teeth escape relegation. Yeah, I, again, it's another club that behind the scenes isn't getting run properly. I think you could throw Man United into that bracket as well. It's the same as up here. You don't want to see big clubs dropping out because they bring so much to the game, particularly the derby games. You know, that everybody looks forward to. So yeah, I have to agree with you in that one. I hope they don't. Yeah, same here. Um, look at the games that are left um, for uh, Liverpool and City. Uh, and Tam is suggesting right now, Man City will beat Leeds, Man City will beat Newcastle, Man City will beat West Ham in London. And the last game, Man City will be crowned champions by defeating Aston Villa. Liverpool have got Newcastle, Tottenham, Villa, uh, Southampton and Wolves. Um, so there's your running. Um, it's It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Um, Newcastle away will be a tough one for Liverpool. Yeah. They're, they're, they're the form team in the league. It's hard to see where, where either would, would stumble, but I think the only thing that comes into play is just how narrow and how tight it is when you know that the margin of failure can be catastrophic. I think that does yeah. have a part to play. In. And I know you're speaking about very experienced players who have been over the course before at both clubs, but... I still think the psychology of sport is, is interesting when the margins are so fine that, that you know just one stumble can cost you the season. Yeah, absolutely. League Champions League's up for grabs as well. I've got to say, um, you know, from the English Premier League, let's just congratulate now Kilmarnock. Great to see them back in the Premiership. Oh, fantastic. It was a great result. You know, it, it looked as if the first half they, they were going to bottle it, to be honest. I thought they were terrible. I think the half-time Derek McInnes, you know, showed about a good manager, his experienced manager, calmed them down. Second half they came out, they knocked the ball about a bit more and there was only going to be one win on the second half. You know, both, you know, huffed and puffed, but I think when Kilmarnock got the equaliser, I fancy them to get the winner and I think they, they deserve it. Derek McInnes done a great job there. Don't think it's a particularly strong squad of players and I think that the, the key one for them was getting Derek McInnes. You know, Kyle Lafferty has been good for them as well, but the key signing for, for them was getting Derek McInnes in and I think... Uh, the chairman Bowie said after the game that he's going to give Derek the, the biggest budget Kamalik's had in their history next season. So, watch this space, he could be up there challenging next year. Yeah. Maybe do it in a grass pitch. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, uh... it would be great if they could do it in a grass pitch. I really hope they spend the money on that instead of us having to suffer um, artificially. It's another part of the embarrassment of Scottish football. Ruffy, um, is it harder for you now knowing that our broth are going to be the, the team in the playoffs? Yeah, not at all. I think Inverness and Arbroath, uh, if you throw us into that, in the, the last games that we've played, there hasn't been much between the two sides. And I think we all know on our day, if we put a show on, we can beat each other. So we're not there yet. We've got the eight goals uh, to our advantage. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, nothing happens at any <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, no, can don't. You imagine there's a full don't. goal swing from Ray no. over stumping Kilmarnock who are surely out not. on the lash. Surely not. Surely, yeah. surely there'll Kilmarnock be players been out in the lash all weekend. Well, there'll be players that come on that want to get a contract for the Premier League. Yeah, so you, you would, <laughs> you would think they would be out there. Yeah. What about uh, we mentioned for uh, Cove Rangers? Uh, fabulous job that Paul Hartley's mm -hmm. uh, managed to do there. The whole structures in place for a team that have got ambitions and and, and they win the the, the League One. Yeah, I think he'll be delighted. It's a great opportunity to come up to the Championship and, and go again. Um, I think at one point he was seen as a very exciting young manager. I think uh, I read some quotes over the weekend where he was, he, he was concerned at how it had gone at Falkirk and, and the damage that had maybe been done to his managerial reputation. So I think it's, it's a fantastic chance for him to come up and, and just show what he's got because it's such a, I think the Championship is such a demanding environment to be in. I think you have so many... Teams who have much of a who are much of a much in terms of budgets, players, standards. So I think it can be quite an exacting arena to go and, and try and perform in Wellin. Yeah, it's amazing. But the older you get, if you get that chance to go through several clubs to to get the experience of winning, he's a difficult time at Falkirk. I don't think he's flavour of the month in Falkirk. Um, he had a good time at Alawa though. No, he did. He, he started off really well at Alloa and then Dundee. I thought he did done a decent job at Dundee. Yeah. Um, just towards the end, it kind of tailed off a little bit, but he had a shocker at Falkirk. I don't think there's any hiding that. They relegated at the club. They got rid of their youth system, uh, which I think is a big bugbear for the Falkirk supporters. But I was listening to the chairman after the game, and they're going to, I think they're going to stay part time, kind of hybrid. And then the following season, if they stay in the Championship, they're going to go full time. So there's big plans up at Cove Rangers. I think they've won three league titles in four years. So it's, a, it's very much a club on the up. and. 
you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do in the championship next, next season. I think they'll do pretty well. Yeah, big week, uh, Ali. Uh, European football, uh, so Rangers have that time now to prepare fully for Leipzig. Um, and if they could pull this off and, and head to Seville for the final, I mean, it would be it would be a tremendous shot in the arm. And, and like the road to Manchester in 2008, they have similarly taken some really good scalps along the way. Yeah, I think, arguably, I think Leipzig might be one of them if, if they had to, to come through that. I know people would look at Dortmund and say that would be the obvious one, but I think when you look at how Leipzig have performed this season, I think they beat Dortmund 4-1 maybe three weeks ago or so. Um, they've been one of the real form teams in, in, in Germany. I think it will be a very demanding game on Thursday night. I have to say I would fear for Rangers going into it because I think Leipzig... Leipzig are very, very capable. The only problem I have with it, of course, um, Leipzig lost to Union Berlin, uh, Ruffy, in their last game. The only problem I have with it is you want to go into the game, a big game like that, especially you know away from home, first of all, to try and take somebody to make it tight, to keep it alive for Ibrox. You want your big players there, and Rangers, you know, two or three players that you would love to have been in the fight are not there. Yeah, you're down to your third strike, aren't you? you know, and it's not something you want to begin into a game with, you know, because we know that generally these big, big games at the crucial moment, your your big striker comes up with a goal that, that takes you through. Uh, and obviously Rangers are minus two, but we saw they're capable enough in midfield and defending-wise, Alan McGregor's always there to make the big save. So it's up front for me, you know, that, uh, and, and I know they get beat at the weekend, but they never played any of their first team. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the other thing about it. Uh, you know, if, if Rangers have had to play, and they made eight changes, Rangers, I think, mm. sensibly, uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst looked at it and thought to himself, listen, this could be a massive season. Getting to a European final would be unbelievable. I think if they can keep it to a goal, then there's it's game on at Ibrox. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but that's, that's easier said than done. Yeah. I think uh, to go over there, you know, they were very unlucky in the Champions League. You know, they're unlucky they're running with PSG and Man City. You know, and they, they took them, you know, I think they beat one of them. I think it might have been PSG. So I think they're a very, very strong side. If, if Rangers can keep it, as you said, a draw or even a one goal defeat, you know, you get back to a full eyebrow, so you never know what can happen. But, you know, I, I think Leipzig will be far too strong at home. Yeah. And I think it could be a two or three nothing. Yeah, here's, here's the other thing here. Quite a few Rangers fans have mentioned on our feed. Um, what do you take? Do you, I mean, you can't have both if you did either or. Uh, Ruffy, would you take... Um, a win against Leipzig to the final or beating Celtic and then suddenly snatching the league? Uh, snatching the league because yeah. the money that's... Well, we don't know the, the coefficient thing yet. We don't know where you're going to be if you're second. But I think winning it, you know, that we, all, we spoke about it right from the beginning of the season, how, how important it is, how many millions it is you get. Uh, and then you can build on that, you know, but... It's a tough one, but uh, the way things are stacked, then uh, I think I would take the, the Europa Cup. Yeah, if you win the Europa League, Ali, you're straight into the Champions League next season. Yeah, it opens the door to that. I also think a European trophy and the possibility of winning it is such a rarity. Essentially, I think um, I think there is something to cover in that. I think there's a kudos that comes with it. Yeah. I think there would always be a. I think there would be an allure in going and, and winning a European trophy. Yeah. There's a far better chance of them winning the Europa League than there is in the league. Yeah, I think I think everybody accepts that now. But <laughs> they're going to get beat three 0 I know, but <laughs> <laughs> still, still gives them a better. Chance. No chance Celtic won the league. Yeah, you know, so they've got the, the Europa Leagues are, and obviously the Scottish Cup. Yeah, um, I'm man. looking here. I'm looking here. Is that, man, guess, is that man of the year? Uh, Michael. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael just said a win against Leipzig over Celtic. No contest. Um, and it's as simple as that. Well, you know, it's what you think yourself. You can give us your point of view on it. Would you Would you take Europa League, a wee bit of history, um, or would you take suddenly um, sacrificing that for coming back and winning the league this season? It's, it, listen, it's all good pub talk. The only thing missing is four beers and we could extend it even further. But nevertheless, um, we will continue our countdown to that. And interestingly enough, on Wednesday, We'll have the nominations for 
the uh, Player of the Year in Scotland uh, from the PFA as well. Uh, and coming out later as well, I think a lot of people will find out um, who's in the running and who maybe will choose for the Football Writers Player of the Year. That'll be a great night, Ali. Really looking forward to that one as well on the 8th. Um, they'll be revealing some of their nominations for Young Player and Player of the Year uh, over the forthcoming days as well. So, uh, lots to talk about this week. And would you believe it? We'll be talking about another Celtic Rangers match after Leipzig against Rangers. So, hopefully, if you get a chance, tell your friends, share the feed, uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and you'll get all the notifications of our live content. There's lots of good one-to-one -one interviews to enjoy uh, and lots more on the horizon as well. Join us if you can tomorrow. Hugh McDonald will be with me, Peter Martin and Ruffy will be there as well. My apologies to a number of people including um, Ruth who was absolutely ruthless no? in her complaint, uh, Ruffy, when she said that, you know, it's so unprofessional to have guys uh, in shorts presenting or hosting an excellent show, and especially Alan trying to make a joke of the whole Shortsgate episode. Just go home and watch a replay of the show and see how ridiculous you look. Um, so that's but, Ruth, uh, who is absolutely <laughs> scathing in anybody wearing shorts on the programme. And, and funnily enough, Ruth, I didn't think it could stoop any lower than that, but today, to see chinos that were in in the 80s brought back onto this program With is, sketches. is like, even uh, more embarrassing um, chinos the only thing missing is the lead singer from haircut 100 singing love plus one yeah. and we could all do some real 80s dance <laughs> yeah, i would like them. to see what ruth thinks about that what the chinos yes i'd like a comment from ruth yeah. please, please ruth <laughs> if you're watching she's she's ruthless <laughs> it's as simple as that chinos alice i know you were getting emotional there uh, hoping to go to henry africa's and get in there and, and start <laughs> dancing again it was incredible wasn't it I haven't seen them in a long time I'm seeing nothing yeah absolutely because <laughs> we're still to see your clobber at the, uh, at the football writers do and the PFA anyway we're looking forward to talking more football tomorrow join us if you can PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel it all starts at four thanks to uh, Ruffy to Tam and Alison from myself Peter Martin thanks for watching <laughs>